Hey y'all, this is um the review for um Love and Hip Hop. I missed um last week's I didn't miss the episode but I watched it late I think. I can't remember but I know I didn't um I didn't review it so I'm gonna put episode I think three episode three that's episode three right episode three and four together um because I watched tonight's episode so I just put them together I'm not even gonna go through the whole episode of episode three I'm gonna just talk about the stuff that you know had me shaking my head um let me see who the hell annoyed me <laughs> last episode well first of all um you know Fizz's girlfriend Kamaya she um was speaking to this blogger named Jason Lee who claimed he blogged for all these important um blog sites um including Bossip but Bossip put him on front street and was like oh you 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 blogged for us you know like that's new to us like basically you're lying so you know Kamaya meets up with him and she's telling him about Fizz and all this stuff about how, you know, the sex with Fizz was whack. When he could get it up, it was decent. But other than that, like, basically, he had a problem. And it got me thinking, like, I hate when girls feel bitter about dudes after they played him or whatever. And they want to throw, oh, you know, his dick is little. His this is little. You know, I really don't want to say it on camera because I'm trying not to be vulgar. But, you know, his thing is little. His, um, his, 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 his um stroke like his 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 pipe game is weak and all this other stuff but it's like okay if it was so corny then why were you messing with him all that time you know so i'm like okay so then um at one point fizz in april Fizz and April met up for like lunch and then Jason Lee st- um, you know, stops by them and he talks to them and he's like, well, you don't know me, but I'm Kamaya's friend. And she told me y'all were messing around and, um, you know, now you got her think now like you were leading her on and you got her looking crazy when she's not the crazy one. And he's like, well, she just needs to come and get her stuff out of my house because, you know, she, you know, she was doing too much. And he's like, you know, if I got good. If I, well, I'm not going to say it again, but he's like, if I, you know, if I, if I, if I got a good pipe game or whatever, um, then I just got it. There's nothing I can do about it, but you being obsessed or whatever. So Jason Lee was like, well, actually she said it wasn't that great. He was like, oh, really? Because the last time we had sex, her legs were shaking and she couldn't move that it was so good. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, so one of y'all lying. (laughs) And I mean, I got a feeling it's Kamaya because Kamaya is in her feelings. And I mean, women do that. Women do that. Women will, will trash a man's, they'll like tarnish his reputation when he tries to play her. So, I mean, I get it. So, um, then, you know, Fizz meets up with Nikki and he's showing her this movie theater that he's, um, investing in. And then he's talking about Kamaya and how he wants Kamaya to come and get her stuff out of his house. And Nikki's like, well, I'll be there to help you with that because Kamaya's been taking shots at me on Instagram and on Twitter and everything. So, you know, I'll help you. So Kamaya comes over later and um, Kamaya comes over later and, you know, Nikki's there and her new by Nikki lingerie. And she approaches, you know, she, well, she confronts Kamaya and tells her, well, you shouldn't hate on another woman you always talking about me on social media and Fizz is like, well, nothing should be getting back to me. Um, through Jason Lee, he's talking about you talking about me and me, our sex life and how it's whack and all of that. So you just need to come and get your stuff and go. So her and Nikki get into like a little altercation. I mean, not really because Kamaya was the one hitting people and throwing stuff. Nikki was just standing there, you know, cause Nikki's not the type to fight unless like, you know, you start with her or whatever. So, you know, Fizz called her all kinds of bitches and all of that. Because she hit him in the face. And, I mean, he shouldn't have called her a bitch. But she shouldn't have put her, her, um, her hands on him. But whatever. So, um, that basically happened. And my whole opinion on that is that Fizz was just... Fizz was sloppy. And Fizz was like this... Like I said, I said this on my Twitter. And, like, a bunch of people retweeted it. This whole Fizz, Kamaya, and Nikki thing reminds me of Nikki, Masika, and Molly last season. Because Fizz is telling Kamaya one thing and doing another. I mean, the only difference is Fizz didn't... Well, Fizz lied, but not like how Molly lied. Molly was just a straight-up habitual liar. Fizz 
was leading that girl on. He was leading Kamaya on. Because he made her think that they were serious. He introduced her to his parents. He introduced her to his son. He introduced her to his friends. So, you know, a girl that's meeting all these important people in your life would assume that you're trying to be serious. Now he got her walking around, you know, like she's delusional. And it's like, Fizz, come on. Like, he was dead wrong for that. But, you know, whatever. I mean, I like him and Nikki together, but he shouldn't have did Kamaya like that. So, Fizz, you lost some cool points with me. So, another thing that annoyed me about this episode was the fact that Jason Lee, his whole, from the time he got on the screen to the time he got off the screen, I was annoyed by his whole existence. Because he's like, he's a queen. He is. He's a queen. And he, he's like petty. Because Nikki wanted to meet up with him and um, Hazel just to do some PR work and some stuff like collabing on whatever for the release of her um, lingerie in November. And she's telling him about Hazel and he's like, oh, Hazel was never a publicist. She was somebody that's like freelance and you get them off the internet and they do what they do. But she was never a publicist. Like basically, you know downplaying what hazel does and insulting her so when hazel got there he was just being real shady to her so you know hazel how she is you shoot her she shoot back and you know she ain't even get to finish what she was saying and he threw a drink in her face and then gonna walk away and say eat that bitch and it's like you're a dude what grown man i despise any dude who throws a drink in a girl's face that is a bitch move i'm I'm just going to keep it real. That's, that is a bitch move. You don't throw a drink in a woman's face. That's disrespectful. What would you do if somebody did that to your mama? Okay? So, that annoyed me. And, of course, Brandy and Max annoyed me. I'm not even going to go too much in in, in in depth of, like, their... Because it's the same thing. She's mad that he ain't have his ring on. He called her a terrorist and said he's not going to put the ring on because she's crazy. So, she's all out in the street. Because he took the ring and he threw it. She all out in the street like, don't do this in front of the neighbors running behind him. He went to go drive off. She's standing in front of the car. He reversed the car on her ass. I'm like, see, you doing too much. I don't even understand why y'all are married. Why are y'all married? Why are y'all married? If he's cheated on you before and you suspect that he's doing it again, then why are you still married to him? I'm not doing all that hiding and trunks of cars, and I'm not, if I gotta do all of that to to find out what you doing, because I don't trust you, then we don't need to be married, plain and simple, and that's what Brandy needs to get, something is wrong with that girl, now on tonight's episode, it was basically, um, about, well, they introduced us, like, furthermore to Willie and Shonda, now, Willie and Shonda, I feel like I'm gonna like them, well, I mean, I already liked Willie, because he's from Day 26, and, uh, Day 26 with my booze. Oh my god. They out they they them them two albums they came out with, I blast faithfully. Okay? But um, you know, he introduced his wife. I've never seen his wife. She's pretty. I mean, she was on the other episode of Love and Hip Hop, but they she was just like a cameo real quick. But she's a pretty woman. She you know, she's pretty. They have two kids together. They put up their savings to move to L.A. so that Willie could get his career off the ground. But she's nervous about it because L.A. is expensive. They used to live in Chicago. L.A. is expensive. And she's afraid that their financial troubles are going to get worse because he's not working and she's not working. Well, he's trying to get his career off the ground, but like nothing is guaranteed. And she's trying to figure it out because she used to be an exotic dancer in Chicago. Before she had kids. Willie doesn't want her to do that anymore. And I mean I completely understand. Because I mean there's people. I live in New York. So I know if New York is expensive. I know California is expensive. So. I feel like you know. Willie and Shonda are relatable. Like Ashley Sha Miller said on um Twitter. She was like. As fake as this show is, Willie and Shonda got real issues. And I mean, I'm pretty sure it is plenty of people all around this world who are going through financial struggles, marriage, like it, it, it causes a, like cause finances, finances and like amongst other stuff are like the number one things that can strain a marriage or relationship period. So the fact that they're, you know, 
they're not being afraid to put their struggles out there. And, you know, people could be like, yeah, I'm going through that too. That's what I like about them. And Willie is like, you know, I'm the man. You know, bills is past due. I'm going to do what I can to get those bills paid. Ain't nothing going to get cut off in here. And Shonda's like, well, I'm a mother, and I know you don't want me to go, you know, go out and, you know, be a stripper or whatever, but my kids need and want, and I'm going to give them what they need and want. So how they both think, that's what people need to look up to in a marriage. Willie is being a man, and, you know, he's, you know, he's handling business like he has that hustler's mentality he's gonna get it done and he's gonna take care of his family so he's telling Shonda not to worry um Miles and Milan and this whole Amber thing like it's annoying um but I mean I don't respect Miles for leading Amber on like he's doing but now that I'm hearing more about his story I get that he's afraid to come out because he's afraid all of his relationships will change because coming out is a big deal, and some people will accept it, some people won't. So I get it. My, Milan needs to fall back a little bit because he should know how hard it is. But at the same time, Miles is feeding him BS, and he's feeding Amber BS. He got Amber thinking that they're going to be together forever. He got Milan thinking that they're going to be together forever. So he needs to stop feeding the both of them lies and finally tell the truth. And that's what um, it looked like he was going to try and do it tonight, but it was a fail. So it looks like he's going to try again next week's episode. So that looks like that's going to be interesting. Um, notice I ain't really talk about Soldier Boy, Nia, and Nas that much because these, these three are annoying me. Like, basically, first of all, I'm still trying to understand how these two are fighting over Soldier Boy. He ain't even that cute. Okay? I mean, if it's because he got money, you know how many dudes in the industry got money and look way better? Like, Soldier Boy is like... Ugh, to me. I, I don't get it, but whatever. And Nia just needs to stop being stupid and wasting her time with him. She's a mother. She needs to be taking care of her child and not running after Soldier Boy. Tonight we met Monique's mother. And Monique looks like her mom. Her mom is pretty. You know, she revealed that um she had Monique at, at a young age, 19. And their relationship was, you know, rocky. Is rocky because they've hurt each other. So they're trying to... um better their relationship and Monique wants her, wants her to meet rich dollars and as soon as they meet they start throwing shade at each other Monique's mother is like oh well um the first thing I look the first thing that came up when I looked you up was child support and I don't understand how your name is rich dollars when you can't even afford to give the dollars to your kid and I'm like really but they were just shading each other the whole entire time and I'm like, Monice is doing all of this way too early. You and Rich only been together seven months. I mean, seven months is not enough time for you to be in love with somebody like this. Like, y'all are just getting to know each other better. Y'all are just, you know, like, it's it's happening too fast. So, you know, her whole dinner plan was a fail. Um, who else? I think, like, I basically covered all the bases of this episode. Not much really happened, but it looks like next episode. Oh, Ray J and Princess. I don't know why Ray J treats Princess like he's her, like, she's her pet. Like, she's his pet. Sorry. Like, he got the girl, he keep the girl cooped up in the house like she can't go nowhere. And now that he know that she's hanging out with Tierra, And, you know, all of us knew from the very beginning that Tierra was feeding Ray J information. We all knew that. But, um, now Princess knows for sure, and her and Ray J break up because she's tired of feeling like, you know, she can't go nowhere, she can't do nothing, and she also feels a certain way because he allowed her to take the fall of getting arrested so that he wouldn't, you know, go to jail himself for violating his probation or whatever, and she said when he let, when he, you know, made her do that, that's when she lost all respect for him, so they basically broke up, and I'm like, well princess one congratulations to you for finally catching on that tiara was playing you and two leave ray j alone y'all are toxic together like obviously y'all are toxic together like y'all always fighting y'all always arguing if you cooped up in the house and you've been with this man for three years and he just keep you in the house while he go run the streets and do whatever then you don't need to be with him because ain't no real man gonna have his child his his woman sitting up in the house doing nothing he gonna encourage her to go out you know, have girlfriends, get a job, you know, all kinds of stuff. So 
leave Ray J alone. You're a pretty girl. You don't need to stay with Ray J. Ray J is not the best. You know, Ray J is cute, but he ain't all that. So, and I mean, I'm saying this now because I'm grown, but I mean, I ain't gonna lie. My little 13 year old self loved Ray J. I ain't gonna lie at 13, but I'm 27 now. So <laughs> that went out the window. It was a little girl crush. You know how it is. The girls like the girl group, the boy groups and the, um, the guys from, the, you know, stuff like that. So 13 year old me would not be saying this, but 27 year old me is going to say Ray J is not all that. <laughs> He's not. He's not. So just move on, princess. You can do so much better. But that was basically episode three and four. Um, They were okay. They weren't as annoying as the other episodes were. So I'll be here next week to um vlog about it. And I just want to say one thing about Black Ink Crew. Dirt just gets on my nerves. I'm going to just put this out there. I didn't like what she said about Donna's baby. And... Ashley Miller had made it clear. She was like, okay, you called Donna's baby a bastard, but the baby that you lost would have been a bastard too. Stop being ignorant. And I'm like, right, because, you know, I'm I'm like, Duchess is just, Duchess be saying stuff. Like, she be flying off the handle with her mouth sometimes. And it's like somebody need to punch her in the mouth for her to get it. Because she feel like she could say stuff and get away with it, and that ain't cool. So I just want to put that out there. Duchess, you were dead ass wrong for saying that. And that was like, that's a terrible thing to say. You're going to talk about this girl and her child. First of all, okay, you don't have to like Donna, but don't talk about nobody's babies. Don't do that. And then why would you say something like that? And you yourself just had a miscarriage not long ago. Like, she is so insensitive. Sometimes Duchess is a straight up asshole and she gets on my nerves. But <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest. So see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend and tell a friend to tell a friend, and I'll see you next video. Later.